before we tear into Rudy Gobert and the supposed defensive player of the year, the 76ers, they force a game seven by beating Atlanta today. And yeah, it was a pretty good game. You know, Doc Rivers made the adjustment of taking Ben Simmons out later in the game so he couldn't be fouled and they would abuse the hack of Ben Simmons method. So I'm glad he made that adjustment. Uh, ben Simmons, again, not very aggressive at all. He only took like one shot in the second half. I don't know what's wrong with him, but Sixers win. They force Game 7. That's cool. Game 7s are great. But now let's get into the supposed Defensive Player of the Year. The, the three-time Defensive Player of the Year. My bad. Rudy fucking Gobert. This is the thing. I don't care who wins the Defensive Player of the Year next season. It better not be him. It cannot be him when the other team, every primitive player, targets him at will and they succeed at doing it like Terrence Mann played great tonight but he averages what 12 14 points a game and what Rudy Gobert is doing is just getting torched in the perimeter by anybody that can dribble the ball a little bit or that can move a little bit yeah great rim protector great rebounder great shot blocker absolute dog shit on the perimeter and with the way teams play nowadays, you have to be confident on the perimeter. I'm not saying he has to go out there and contest every shot. But he was giving up so many warm-up three-pointers that anybody that's picked up the basketball just a little bit can make. Like these are NBA players, and you leaving them wide open from three constantly. And you think you're not going to lose that game? And then Quinn Snyder's. Excellent job by not adjusting or taking him out the game. It's not like Rudy Gobert is providing you anything on offense anyway. So you don't have nothing to lose by taking him out. Because he wasn't getting those crucial boards that you need him to get. So the Clippers get a second chance opportunity. They kick out to the corner. And guess what? Terrence Mann, Reggie Jackson, or whoever is open. And they flash another three. So, yeah. Quinn signed a great job by not making the adjustment and taking him out the game. When you see him getting abused. When you saw him getting abused in the last game but yeah don't take him out the Jazz played uh, you could say a perfect first half they were up 20 they scored 70 some, something points and yeah you would think even if they you know they fizzle out and they go cold they could still win this game because you got a 20 point cushion so if you do go cold if you get a couple of stops and you just simply tread water by getting a couple of buckets here and there you, you know you would squeak out a close victory no because what happens, the Clippers go on a 17-0 run, they make a bunch of threes on Rudy Gobert's assignment, and we got a close game. Yeah, no, that, that, that was a downright pathetic, bro. I haven't seen a collapse this hard since the Falcons in that Super Bowl game. Like, wow. Defensive player of the year. And he, and he, and he should have got played off the court, but... Quinn Snyder wants to be a dumbass. That, that's okay with me. Clippers advance to their first Western Conference Finals, and they will play the Suns. That will be that will also be a good series. Uh, it's a shame that Kawhi won't be in this series, but I still think this series is going to seven games because even though it won't be uh, Terrence Mann having another 39-point game, the Clippers role plays they have been consistent and they have shown up throughout the playoffs. So yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if it goes seven games. And I think Devin Book is going to be a problem when it comes to the Clippers because the Clippers, they, they did get cooked by uh, Donovan Mitchell and Luka Doncic. Even though they lost, well not lost, even though they won those series, I don't think it's the team going to be able to do that because even though Devin Booker is their best player, they have other guys that can still score. And they got Chris Paul, so if they get a big lead like that, they're not going to choke it away like the Jazz. Or they won't collapse, you know, in the second half or fade out like Luka and the Mavs. But yeah, that was a great game from just about everyone on the Clippers. Even Patrick Beverly was splashing threes on Rudy Gobert. Like, and I just don't get it. Like, at some point, when, once you see Terrence Mann has it going early, because he, he was really hot in the first quarter. He had like 12 points. He didn't do much in the second. But once, you know, he goes bonkers and he starts getting, you know, 10 points in the third quarter, you gotta start doubling him. Like, shit, let somebody else beat you. But they didn't do that. They kept letting him shoot open threes. And it doesn't matter if Terrence Bennett isn't a good shooter. 
he was a good shooter tonight. You mean that he was a good shooter tonight? It means you have to guard him. It, it's really that simple. But yeah, I, I do not want Rudy Gobert to even sniff that fucking award next year. He better not. I don't care how much of a fucking media darling he is, and that he plays for a small market team. I do not give a shit. He cannot be the defensive player of the year. You're getting played off the fucking court. Just like how you can't be a max player, and you're only taking one shot in the second half, a la Ben Simmons. But, yeah, don't care who they give it to. Hell, they they can give the defense player of the year award to Ben Simmons. He doesn't get a, he doesn't get abused on defense. He can block shots from perimeter. You saw him do it tonight with Trey Young. They can give it to Bam, they can give it to Draymond, they can give it to Giannis again. I do not care. I'm just saying it cannot be Rudy fucking Gobert. Because that was downright pathetic from him and the Utah Jazz as a cohesive unit. But with that rant on Rudy Gobert out the way, ladies and gentlemen, y'all stay safe and I'm out.